I've started taking apart my latest Kenna and trying to get her back into a reasonable shape. Um, this is this would be a really long video, so instead I've split it into different videos, and this is the first part, which is me tackling her hair. Um, I don't know, trigger warning, there are scissors involved, I am going to cut some hair off. Please don't be too sad. It is my doll, and just if it does make you sad, remember that I spent my money on it, it's not yours. So this is what our latest Kenna is looking like. We can see she's a little bit of a mess. She's got a fair amount of scalp melt, which is going to make this hard to prise off. So I'm going to go in with a scalpel and a crochet hook. The scalpel I'll use to slice off any scalp melt that I can't tease away. And the crochet hook I'm going to use to tease away any of the hairs that are stuck into that scalp melt because I want as minimal breakage as possible. The inside of a Kenna has a few pegs on the hard cap and these usually snap with age, but on this one, they're all intact. So what I'm doing is I'm using my scalpel to snap the end of the peg off so that I can use my crochet hook to hook in through the hole and release the scalp from the hard cap. The rubber scalp itself has some holes that the pegs of the hard cap go through and then these slot into the main body of the head. It makes it quite secure but it really is designed not to come apart. So here I'm just snapping those pegs off. My hard cap itself is crumbling a little bit. This is why I've opted to snap the pegs off rather than see if I can stretch the scalp over them whilst they're still intact. I don't want to put any pressure on or bend my hard cap as we can see here it is crumbling apart a little bit. So I'm going to continue my way around the scalp using a scalpel to snap the pegs and using a crochet hook to release the scalp from the dome. So here we can see that as I pull the scalp away some of the loops of the hair have become attached with scalp melt. So my camera actually dies here, but what I did to release them was I just cut off a sliver of the plastic that was attaching them so that they remained intact with a little sliver of plastic stuck to the inside of the loop. I did this instead of just cutting them because if you cut them, they start to unravel and then you have to secure them and you won't notice a tiny bit of missing plastic off of this part of the doll. I went in and secured any loose plugs by tying a knot. With locked and looped hair, what keeps the hair in is the tension of the plug in front. So you need to make sure that if there are any gaps, everything has been knotted and secured before brushing or else the hair could come out. You can see that I start by just brushing the very ends of the hair. And then once that is nice and combed through, I move slightly further up the hair. This is because I don't want to put too much pressure on this because I'll end up ripping the hair out. And if you stretch the hair as well by pulling too hard, that creates additional frizz, which is not what we want. Once it's all brushed through, you can see it's a little bit frizzy here. I'm going to wash this. I'm going to let it dry and then I'll work on it further. It's got a little short bit here, but I'll use a crochet hook to pull that back through so that that remains on the inside of the scalp instead of being visible on the outside. I washed the hair in washing up liquid to remove any of the dust and grime that had built up over the years. And then I use my hair straighteners to go over and straighten the hair. So I'm going to separate the plugs out and do them kind of row by row. I've tied up half the hair here just so that it doesn't get in the way. I'm using my crochet hook to separate it out, but you really could use anything. And I'm gonna use my hair straightener to go over it. I highly recommend doing a test strand on a little piece of hair first to find out if your hair straightener is too hot. This is a variable temperature straightener and I'm doing this on a very low heat. I would not recommend this on a high heat, you will melt the hair off. So I'm just going to continue around the head, straightening the hair. You don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to stretch any of the hair, we're just opting to straighten it. And then the very frizziest bits right at the end that just aren't going straight at all are the only parts that I will trim off. 
I've sped this part up massively so as not to bore you, but it's quite slow progress, just working my way around the scalp, making sure that it's all nice and straight. The first cuts I'm going to do are just to cut off the very, very end frazzled parts that are very, very frizzy. I'll do this first so that before I decide if I want to cut it into any kind of style at the end, I know that I've left myself with the maximum amount of hair possible. So now that I've been through and straightened all the hair and trimmed off the frizzy ends, if you're like, what is this patch here? Why is it green? Is it a highlight? No, it's just green. I quite like when the redheads get green streaks. I'm not sure what causes it. Some people say sunlight, some people say oxidation. I'm not a scientist, but I just think it looks cute. The haircut is quite uneven, so I'll see what it looks like on the doll. So we can see here with it popped on that that part there that was really matted is much shorter than the other side. And this is one of the reasons why I think she might have already had a haircut because I didn't cut any more of the matted side than I cut off the other side, but you can see it's massively longer even with that trim. I'm quite impressed with how cute this looks and to be honest I think I'll hold off on doing any additional trims or styling until the dollars all back in one piece. Thanks for watching.